Hello everyone, and welcome back to another episode of Rust Electricity for Beginners. My name is Ozzy, and today we're going to talk about the industrial system, which is essentially a way for you to pass items and resources from one container to another. Now the heart and soul of this system is the conveyor. There are a lot of things you can do with this, such as adding filters to only allow certain items to pass through or to exclude certain items. But we're not going to discuss that today. We're going to use the conveyor as if you just throw it on the wall and you don't put any filters on it at all. Now it does have several electrical nodes on it. You have a power in for providing power, a pass through to put additional power to another conveyor or a furnace perhaps. It has the ability to turn on, turn off from electrical nodes, and it also has this new filter pass, filter fail. It'll essentially send one power to each of these based on whether or not it successfully passes an item along through the system. Now, for this to work, you also need an adapter on whichever boxes you're going to be passing items through. On the large box, there are four locations you can add this to. On the small box, there are two. And I'm just going to add these to the top of each of these. There is also the pipe wrench, which allows you to connect the industrial nodes to each other. There is an in and an out on the conveyor and each adapter. This essentially creates a pipeline that allows us to pass items through. Now I've got a thousand wood in this left bo large box. And what this conveyor is going to do is it's going to check to see if there are any items it can pass. It's going to say, hey, there's something we can do. It's going to show you that item on its little screen there. The box losing items is going to flash red. The box gaining items is going to flash green. And it takes 60 of each stack each time it passes an item along. Now what this means is that if I have two stacks, instead of passing 60 at a time, I can pass 120 at a time, 60 from each stack. And there we'll see we have 120. Here we have a box connected to a furnace. We have metal ore and wood in here, and it'll actually take both of these at the same time. It'll pass 60 from each stack, and it allocates them appropriately into fuel or input. Over here we have two boxes connected in series on the receiving end. And the way this will work is it's going to take this cloth, it's going to take 60 from this one stack, and it's going to send 30 to each box. It divides it evenly amongst the boxes that it's connected to, as best as possible. Now if I were to take these back, and fill this box with 6,000 cloth. It's going to take 60 from each stack, so 360 cloth total, and it's going to divide that evenly into 180 for each box. Over here, we have essentially the same thing, except one of those boxes is a furnace, but the conveyor doesn't know any different. So it's going to take these two resources, and it's going to divide them evenly between the two boxes that it sees after itself. It's going to send 30 to the furnace, and 30 to the box afterwards. It essentially cannot differentiate between a furnace and a box, and it will treat them the same, splitting the resources from the donation box to the receiving boxes. And that's not really what we want with a furnace, so we're going to keep going. This one is a little bit different. It's essentially two boxes connected in series before the conveyor. Now it's going to try and pull 60 from any available resources. It essentially ignores the furnace because there's nothing in the output, and then it sends those resources to this outer box. It's not going to be able to pull resources from this box into this one because all it sees in front of it are two containers. Over here is how you actually can push items into a furnace have it smelt those items, and then pull smelted goods out of a furnace. You need a conveyor on each side. So what this conveyor will do is send 60 from each of these two stacks into the furnace. And then you'll notice there are none in this box over here. And even if we turn this conveyor on, it's not going to pull anything from the furnace because it's trying to pull from the output. There's nothing in this box. And if we actually start to smelt in the furnace and give ourselves some sulfur and maybe some charcoal, and then we turn this conveyor back on, it'll pull that output out and place it into the box on the right. Now the reason it works this way is because a conveyor cannot see past another conveyor. 
So this conveyor believes that this box and this furnace are the only two things in existence. And this conveyor believes that this furnace and this box are the only two things in existence. And that's how that functions together. Now one more component in the industrial system is a combiner. And this allows you to take multiple inputs and combine it into one output. This is useful if you want to take multiple different boxes and put it through a single conveyor or possibly multiple conveyors into a single box. Lots of different opportunities. And what it does is it kind of acts as though all of these were in series. So each of these have a thousand wood inside and it's going to take 60 from each stack in here and it's going to pass those along to this stack over here giving us 180. Now the nice thing about this being on a splitter instead of connected in series is that if I were to lose this box in a raid or something, the system still works for the remaining boxes. If they were connected in series and I lost one of the boxes, except for the very last one, I would essentially lose everything left of that box in the system. Anything that is connected after that box would no longer be seen by the conveyor, it wouldn't be connected anymore. So this is a good way of sort of splitting up your stuff, protecting your base against raids and your industrial systems to make sure that they still work, that they still have inputs. Similarly, the splitter allows you to take one uh, output and split it into multiple inputs. So we have a thousand wood here and this conveyor is going to take that thousand wood, pull 60 from the stack, and split it evenly amongst each of these boxes, 20 into each. Similarly, if I were to lose one of these boxes, it would still function for the remainder, which is nice for just consistency in your base and protecting against um, broken systems during a raid. Over here we have an example of how a lot of these can work together. Now this is not my preferred system, but it is one way that we can explore some of the nuances of these components as they interact together. Now what we would normally expect for the system is that this conveyor is going to try to evenly pull from these boxes, distribute evenly to these furnaces, and then this conveyor will try to distribute evenly to these boxes. That's not actually going to happen though. In this box we have metal ore, in this one we have sulfur, and in this one we have high qual. And because a furnace only has two slots, <clears throat> and the conveyor tries to distribute evenly, it's actually going to fill both of those slots with metal ore and sulfur in all three of these furnaces. Now it will still pull 60 from each stack up to 12 stacks, and then it kind of ignores the rest of it. But the reason it pulled the ore and the sulfur first is because the combiner will prioritize its first input. So it's looking at this first input first, the second input second, and then when it realizes it doesn't have enough room, it kind of ignores this last one. Now on the opposite side, it's interesting to note that these two boxes are completely empty, and all of our smelted goods have ended up in this first box. The reason for that is because what this conveyor is doing is it's pulling 60 from each available stack from each furnace. And since we have it active from the very beginning, it's only reaching maybe one or two of each item before it begins pulling from each stack. And the way the splitter actually works is rather than splitting everything equally all at the same time, what it does is for every stack it pulls from, remember it pulls 60 from each stack. From every stack it pulls from, it divides 20 into the first output, then 20 into the second, and then 20 into the third with priority. So because it's prioritizing that first output, and we're not actually reaching 20 in each stack, because we're sending the first 20 from each stack here, it's actually sending everything here. So if you want to split them evenly, there are ways to do that we'll discuss in another video, but it's important to note how each of these components function, because knowing how they function can help save you a lot of frustration when you try and set up your builds. Now the last thing I want to discuss is depth. A conveyor can only see 32 boxes in front of it. And what that means is if I connect to this over here, I've got 31 boxes plus this last one, it's up here for convenience. If I set all if I connect all of those in series and I turn this conveyor on, it will it will be able to pass through from this box. 
However, if I connect 33, it's not going to see this last box over here. It's going to give me a filter fail response instead. Now what this filter fail actually means is that there's nothing in these first 32 boxes that it can pass through. It can actually see them. It's not like a short circuit in a power system that causes the whole thing to fail. So if I pull the wood from this box and I put it in this one, it'll still function like normal pulling from this box because it's one of the 32 that it can see. So if we put this wood back... Actually, I need this in the other box. It makes more sense that way. So if we put this wood back, maybe we're thinking, okay, well, if we perhaps go back this far and we connect 31 to the splitter maybe it can see you know 31 back this direction and 31 back this direction plus the combiner i keep calling it a splitter because it has three out on the same side and it makes me think of the electrical splitter it's a combiner it's a combiner so it will give us a success and it will properly pass through 60 wood but the reason why is actually because what it's doing is it's seeing this left line up to this box and it's pulling these it's not seeing this right line at all and what it's doing is it's prioritizing this first input and it's seeing these 32 boxes the thing is if i lose these boxes it'll also still work because now it will actually see this box. And the reason why is because these are now the 32 boxes that it can see. So splitters and combiners are really, really useful for protecting the stuff in your base, making sure that you have redundancy and things like that. That's kind of a real quick and dirty sort of explanation to the industrial system and how it functions and acts. There's a whole lot more you can do with it, but that's all we're gonna cover in this episode. I hope that helped you out. If it did, please hit that thumbs up button. If you'd like to see more videos like this, feel free to subscribe. And if you have any questions or comments, leave them down below for me. That's all for today. Thank you for watching, and I will see you all next time.